this video is a tutorial for Microsoft Teams for the iPad. Microsoft Teams is an application that allows you to communicate with others and collaborate on projects. It's widely used for personal communication as well as business and education. Microsoft Teams is available for free, however you get more features with a Microsoft 365 subscription. Depending on if you have a free or a paid account, some features in this tutorial might not be available for you. This tutorial will be focusing on the features found on personal accounts. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you find this video useful. Timestamps are available in the description if there is a specific feature you are looking for. Otherwise, sit back and enjoy this video tutorial. When you load the app, you will see a two column screen with a menu bar to the side. The menu bar will show recent activity, the chat and meet section to set up video conference calls and more with some additional options. In the top left corner, you'll see your profile picture, which contains settings related to your Microsoft account and further options for app related settings. It's here that we'll start our tutorial. Tap your profile picture in the top left corner of the screen to view the app options. Here you'll see the word available. Tapping this allows you to set your online status. Underneath this, you can set a status message. Your status can be up to 280 characters in length. And you can also set how long the message should be visible for. Notifications is the next option where you can adjust what types of notifications you'll receive for Microsoft Teams. You can also choose when notifications will be blocked. For example, if you're in a meeting and do not wish to be disturbed. You can also choose a custom notification sound. Let's tap on the settings option on the menu. First, we have appearance. Here we can choose between a light, dark or a system default theme for the app. Next, we have data and storage. The first option lets you reduce the amount of data used for video calls. This can be useful if you're using a cellular connection frequently to take calls and wish to limit data usage. Next, you can change the image upload quality in messages. By default, this is set to automatic, which will upload high res images at all times, except when there is poor connectivity. You have options to always send images at full, high or low resolution. Back on the data and storage menu, you can also toggle whether or not you want to use mobile data to download files for offline use. If your iPad is running low on space, you can clear downloaded files and app data. Microsoft Teams has automatic translation built into it for messages. Tap on translation, then choose from the list of languages. Back on the settings menu, you also have a few further options. Profile lets you view your public profile. Notifications brings up the same options found on the main menu. And messaging lets you turn off read receipts, turn GIFs on or off, and enable YouTube video previews. Under Calendar, you can connect your Google Calendar if you want to use this as the default calendar inside the app. Under People, you can synchronize contacts you have stored on your iPad and you can sync contacts from your Google account too. Below this are various other options and information. At the bottom of this menu, you can add additional Microsoft accounts, including business and educational accounts. You can also sign out or delete your account entirely. On the main menu, you can also view the current benefits if you have a paid account and add additional accounts if you have any. Let's now go back into the main part of the app and to the menu on the left side of the screen. The top menu option is for activity. Tapping on this will change the left column to display any notifications you have received. Below the title feed in this column, you'll see a search bar. Here you can search for notifications for specific messages, people, files, and more. Tap chat on the left menu to see a list of your current chats in the left column. 
The right column will display whatever chat has been selected. Next to the chat title, you'll see there's a filter icon. Tapping this lets you filter by unread, meetings, and muted chats and groups. Next to this is a camera icon, which will start a new video meeting. You can give your meeting a name, get a link to share with others to join the meeting, and the last button will start the video meeting. We'll talk more about meetings later in this tutorial. Underneath this is a search bar. You can search by a name, email or contact number. This will search both your local contacts and your directory if you're part of a business or education institution. At the bottom of the left hand column, you can tap to start a new chat group. For each chat you have available, you have some general options for each one. Swiping from left to right over each chat will show three dots and more. The menu that appears here will allow you to pin the chat to the top of the list, mute the chat and hide the chat. Swiping right to left over each chat will also allow you to mark it as unread. In the chat section, the right hand and main part of the screen will show whatever chat you have selected. To send a message, the text field at the bottom allows you to do this. However, unlike most messaging apps, Teams allows you to customize the look of the text you want to send. Next to the text field, there is a plus icon. Tapping this opens a menu, allowing you to customize your message. Let's tap on format. This brings up a small menu above the text that lets you make your text bold, italicized or underlined. You can also highlight the text or show the text as red or black. Tap the close button on this menu to close it. Tap the plus icon again and you'll see more options to add items to your message. Media lets you send an image either from your photo library or to take a photo using your device's camera. Attach uses the Files app on your iPad to attach a file. If you have added OneDrive or Google Drive to the Files app on your iPad, you'll be able to attach files from those services too. Location lets you share your location to the members of the group and Tasks let you add a task to a task list based on the chat. Within the chat, you can also add an event. This will create a new event on your calendar and send it straight to the chat. Finally, you can create a poll, asking a question and then setting up options for which members of the group can vote. To add more than two options, tap add option. To let members choose more than one option, toggle the multiple selections option. To the right of the text box, you'll see a smiley face. Tapping this will let you send an emoji and search for a meme or a GIF to send to the group. The camera icon lets you take a picture or send a scan or a video using your device's camera. Underneath the capture button, you can tap between video, photo, document, whiteboard and business card to send one of those to your group. To send an audio message, tap and hold on the microphone icon next to the text box to record and send an audio message. Currently, there is no send button on display on the app. To send the message, you'll need to hit the return key on your hardware keyboard or on the pop-up software keyboard that appears on the screen. In the main chat window, it's possible to interact with different messages that you receive. Long pressing over a message brings up an emoji menu, allowing you to provide reactions to the message. You can also reply to a specific message, forward it, save it, copy it, or mark it as unread. For messages that you send, you can also edit and delete them. If you tap the name of the chat at the top of the screen, you'll be taken to a page with additional options. Tapping the picture above the chat name will let you choose a custom image for the group. 
the pencil icon next to the chat name will allow you to change the name of the chat. Below this are buttons that let you mute the chat, search for something within it, change the theme color, which will change the color of the message bubbles. And under more, you can generate a QR code to join the group. Below this, you can add new people to the group and see what photos and files have been sent to the group. You can add a task, meeting, or location to the group. And the final option is to leave the group. Next to the files that have been sent to the group, you'll see three dots. Tapping it brings up a menu that lets you open the file, share it, send a copy, or to download the file and make it available offline. In the top right corner is a share button, and that will generate an invite link, which will then open the iPad OS share sheet to share that link with specific people or via a different app. Over on the menu on the left hand side, you'll see the third icon is called Meet. This is where you can start a video meeting. Tap Meet Now to start a meeting. Give your meeting a name, then copy the meeting link, and then start the meeting. The bottom menu gives us all of the options for the video call. The first option is to open the chat. This opens up the sidebar showing messages sent between participants in the meeting. Like the chat in the main part of the app, you have text formatting options and the ability to send files, emojis and GIFs. Long pressing over messages in the chat gives you the option to react to the message with emojis or reply, edit and delete messages. The participants option is next and lets you view a list of people present and lets you manage the meeting. Tapping on a participant opens a menu where they can be pinned, put on hold, or spotlighted for everyone, which means everyone will be looking at that person. From this window, you'll also be able to mute and remove people from this meeting if you have other participants. Tapping on your own name will also give you the raise my hand option if you want to get the attention of the main speaker or presenter. At the top of this menu is meeting options. This gives you two further options. If you want a lobby or waiting room or not have one at all, this can be enabled or disabled here. Next, you can choose who is presenting or sharing their screen. This can be just you or you can permit anyone to share their screen if you have multiple presenters. Next on the bottom menu is the share button. This will let you share a photo or video or share your screen. Next to share screen, you'll have the option for whether or not you want to share the audio from your device as well. Tapping share screen will share your entire screen. Tap Start Broadcast to begin sharing your screen. To stop presenting your screen, tap Stop Presenting, which appears above the bottom menu. The next item on the bottom menu is called Reactions. This provides feedback to the speaker through the use of emojis and allows you to raise your hand in order to get the speaker's attention. Raising your hand or giving reactions provides a notification back in the Participants tab. If you raise your hand and then change your mind, you can click it again to lower your hand. The remaining options on the bottom menu let you turn off your camera or mute your mic and mute the audio for the call. The next icon is called More and has three dots. This brings up a large menu with even more options for the meeting. At the top are the emojis which you can use to react in the meeting. Background effects lets you blur your background or add a background image, either as a custom image or from one of the many images in the gallery. From this menu, you can also turn on live captions. The last option is to leave or end the meeting. Back on the screen, the final option on the left menu is called more. 
This brings up a small menu of additional functions within the app. The calendar in Microsoft Teams shows your upcoming events as a list. Items on the list can be tapped, which will allow you to show the meeting details and allow you to join or edit the meeting. You also have the options to cancel the event. At the top of the calendar is a list of dates for the week. Below this is a horizontal line which can be dragged to open up this calendar to show month view. This allows you to skip ahead to dates in the future. In the bottom right corner is a new meeting button. This opens up a window that lets you schedule a video meeting for a future date. You can start by giving the meeting a name, then choosing its participants. You can then choose a start and end date and time and choose whether or not this is a repeating meeting and how often it should repeat. Description lets you add some information about the meeting for participants, such as an agenda. Back on the More menu, you have several more options. Calls lets you view your call history. Camera opens the device's camera. Files shows you recent files from Teams and OneDrive. And Saved shows you saved conversations if you have saved any previously. That's the end of this tutorial for Microsoft Teams on the iPad. If you found this video useful, please like, comment and subscribe. If you want to leave a tip, please use the super thanks button here on YouTube, or you can head over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash buzzkill to leave a tip there. PayPal, debit and credit cards and Apple Pay are all accepted. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll be back soon with some more iPad tutorials.